Arc Omega adds hundreds of thousands of dino variations and a plethora of bosses. I will attempt a dual class Ranger and Beastmaster, and we have some set goals. Tame one variant of each dino group to Omega tier, create a diverse bossing team, and to beat at least six bosses and six gods in order to face off against a powerful group god. Hey, 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 my lovelies, I am your humble ringmaster, Chromeda, and without further ado, let the show begin! Spawning in on a beach with a beautiful sunrise, I found myself next to this cool Viking ship. As Yes, this is on the Valhalla Redux map. Running along the shoreline and picking up stuff along the way, I got to preparing my basic tools, but noticed you get some gifted right off the get-go, like this axe that's made out of stone that can swap modes into a pick. With some dodos slain for some easy meat and hide, it was time to look for a safe base location. Continuing my journey, I found this tech para with a very, very, very long name, and that's because in Omega, all dinos get tiers and variants applied to them. We'll get into that more once we cross that bridge, but for now, what I really wanted to cross was this water to make it over to that island over there that seems pretty safe. More unique creatures made themselves known to me, like this big old shield lystro and an obsidian featherlight. With more dodos removed from this plane of existence, I reached level 8 and saw the lystro deploying a literal bubble shield. Must be a fan of Master Chief. I made a trusty canoe and started to swim on over to the island, and I really got to appreciate this map's beauty. It feels cozy and really well made, plus the thrill of not knowing what creatures I'd come across to tame had me excited beyond measure. Circling the island, I found that it had a cave entrance, which was quite spacious with a big old hole in the middle. So it was decided, home base acquired. So I placed a bed and lit up the place with some standing torches. To finish up the day, I consumed the Beastmaster class, as well as the Ranger class, plus, well, the DPS roll, because why not? And in order to be able to sleep in peace at night, I ended up placing some spikes at the entrance. Better safe than sorry. Day 2 and some basic structures needed to be placed, like some storage, a campfire, mortar and pestle, and also whipped up some ranger trainee gear. Omega does offer 28 special armor sets with unique abilities, but for now this will help us get by, at least starting off. That's for the first ability to unlock, it is Predator Vision. So now we can see the heat signature of the creatures around us, which will be super useful. Walking around the little island, I was sure to demolish many boulders for just a little bit of metal to get started, and come across more wild creature types like this stone Bronto peacefully having a stroll, a prime zombie Anki, and a self-destruct PT. Now that's a combo I do not want to fight with. A chunky trilobite was taken out and I got a soul and some essence. Those are needed to make some kibble, of which there are an insane amount to craft. With its oil and chitin harvested, I got to placing a forge, smelt a few metal ores that I had gotten, and made a altar that looks kind of exactly like a smithy. But inside of it, I could make Beastmaster ammo, so I prepared a ranger trainee bow, but the arrows are not compatible. Big surprise. Once I realized that the Beastmaster has a crossbow, I made that and tested the two ranged weapons to compare them. Weirdly, the crossbow, when pulled out, does look like a bow. I don't know, man. Arc rarely makes any sense, but this one takes the confusion cake. But let me tell you, the Ranger Trainee bow is just, it's hands down, just much better. And also, I learned this reflective target here deals damage back to me. Upon its defeat, though, I got a magic charm for the offhand slot, giving me boosts, which is a pretty cool drop. Day 3 started with a smithy, some bolas, and a Omega workbench for all of our mod item needs. As for narcotics, I mixed some narcotics with basic essence to get a basic sedative. This same process will be done with better essences and can yield you much better knockout arrows, but for now, so these basic ones will do. A normal bow was made since none of mine fired trank arrows, apparently. And let's follow up all this crafting with a Omega Raft, which is upgradable. And well, yes, sharks in the water are pretty terrifying. The sheer variety of Megalodons around HQ was quite interesting, for example, Ultimate Resilience, Beta Shield, Ultimate Plague, Alpha, Vampire, Beta, Siren, Stone, Skeletal, Beta, Reactive, and a Surf Shark! Our sponsor for today's adventure, the VPN that keeps your online identity safe through encryption and lets you swap the location of your device to any country in the world. Thanks to that, you can bypass geo restrictions, which means getting access to content that would otherwise be blocked in your region. It also stops your service provider from throttling your data during intensive activities. In other words, when you're clutching in PvP, internet speed don't go down. And let's be honest, in this day and age, you have to stay safe online due to multiple forms of cyber attacks. And Surfshark eats these threats right up with data encryption to secure your info while using public Wi-Fi. Masking your IP so your location and download history are not linked to you. A clean web feature to block tons of sketchy attempts to compromise your safety. Plus, DDoS protection. Need I say more? Because I can. They got an alert system, antivirus to keep your device squeaky clean, and search capabilities for more organic results. 
Since getting access to block content plus high level security on your devices is such a no brainer, use my code right here to get an extra three months for free. And do not forget they offer 30 day money back guarantee. So there's absolutely no risks involved. So sign up through my link in the description and stay protected out there, my lovelies. On a quest to search for crystal and metal, we got to the shoreline and ran into the forest with predator vision on to see the dangers around me easier. Going uphill, I reached this ruined aqueduct that you already know that we have to cross that. At the end of this, a cardo was blocking the path but quickly got distracted and yeeted itself down, granting me access to some ruins which I inspected, but I was quick to realize that this place was definitely not abandoned. That right there is my cue to skedaddle, back to where I came, seeing weird and trippy lights down below. But let me tell you, just look at how useful the heat vision is, it is so good at night. Once I stumbled on this hill, I got to snatching up metal and obsidian, but stayed on my toes as a manticore that spawns dinos was nearby. Sadly no crystal was here, so down to the forest I go with explosions going off nearby. Curiosity got the better of me as I went to the clearing where the explosions came from. Some dead terror birds were harvested, and right after that, I made it safely back to the beach. A flyer would be very, very nice right now, and I might not have my spyglass, yet regardless, I tried to tame this Alpha Earth PT, but it did break free. Thanks to Predator Vision, though, I could track it through the trees, but I heard a massive storm coming, so I would have to make this quick. The bola connected, and once this annoying Dilo was dealt with, I landed the KO and put some meat inside it and turned around to see something in the distance was causing a black hole slash storm thingamajiggy in a fight. So as long as they don't come closer, I'll be okay. Hopefully. Sadly though, the Alpha Earth BT doesn't seem to eat meat and I really need a spyglass ASAP to learn what tames actually want. After passing by a loot trike, which seemed pretty fancy, I stumbled upon a crystal lystro, which is just what I needed. Shooting it made it launch some balls of explosive crystal, but it got taken out pretty easily, granting me tons of crystal. Hey, nice. And I got a new charm too. With the awesome spyglass now made, I grabbed the raft and returned to our sleepy friend and read that it wants alpha kibble. So I went on home, equipped the new charm since it is much better for tanking, and made the kibble machine within which, you guessed it, make the insane amount of variety kibble for all types of tames. And reading them, I came to realize it would be very necessary to build up almost each type of dino tier, starting off with basic dinos and moving upwards. Knowing that I would need a farm, I started preparing some foundations. Day 5 and some new skills were learned, like Dino Heal and Camouflage to go invisible. To start the basic tier of kibble, I would need some vanilla eggs, so it's time to tame some dodos. Scouring the beach, I saw a turkey, when suddenly, bats. Pretty sure it summoned them and they wasted no time chasing me across the lake, where I did find two dodos to breed, so that's a taming pair ready to go right there. Who also got straight to preparing all of these eggs for me back at base, but super slowly as yes, any boosted rates for an Omega server makes the mod much, much harder than needed, so almost all of the settings are at 1x. With some more wood gathered, I gave this place a little bit of an entrance to my cave, and went to hunt during the night for some meat, so with this stego taken out, I now had all the things to slowly get the basic tier of kibble going. Day 6 and ya boy needed poly and pace, so a very, very long expedition was made traveling across the rivers with beautiful scenery, mind you, leading me to the southern part of the map, where ice islands were located. Here, Kairukus got slaughtered for said poly, got to tame up a male, grab some oil from the rocks, tons of more poly and prime meat, and punch this penguin to give it a concussion, which, you know, in this world, means that it becomes my friend. So that's a poly breeding pair that is ready to be taken back to base. By the time that I was done with this quest, night had already fallen across the map. The trip home had a tense encounter with a lead that I thankfully outsped. Continuing our expedition, we ended up on the eastern side of the map looking for beaver dams. Once landfall was made, I cautiously made it through the brush on foot till I spotted the beavers and sneakily waddled my way past them to one that seemed to be clear. I activated my camouflage, I opened it up and found no paste inside, and that alerted all the beavers to my presence. Uh -oh. And they still locked on to me, regardless of my camouflage. Oh, he's still coming. 
Far I ran, far, far indeed, and they still kept chasing me. My mistake was attempting this extra dam, and I did get pace, but one caught up to me and nipped my butt so hard that I perished. Once respawned, I was very glad that I did have the tombstone mod installed to keep my items upon death, because apparently the official Omega server also has this. I've heard, I could be wrong, I just, it's what I've been told. Whoever on this beach is where I met one of my patrons, who already had made great progress showing off a crazy flying lead? This mod surely has everything you could possibly imagine. Once that was over, I just prepared a new canoe and paddled my way on home. By day 8, the penguins were breeding at a soul terminal place and just ended up putting the dodos and penguins inside the terminal to make unfertile eggs for now for kibble. Also, I'm glad that early on I did think about putting down a preserving bin to get, you know, jerky going, because that's also a highly needed ingredient. Some more hunting would do me good, surely, for more jerky making and soul collecting, but this Wednesday go Sonic boomed my face off a couple of times till I finally managed to land the killing blow. I also saw this pygmy fronto. So small. Much baby. A Beastmaster altar was put down, but I could first make more of my class gear at a higher level, so I just worked on crops all day, getting greenhouse parts made and so on. The next day, I decided that a trip for metal was needed, but this big chunky compy followed me into the water, keeping up with me to my surprise, but both of us got to meet one of those sharks from earlier. Oh, oh. okay. After that, I did get back to the same metal spot from before and just gathered all that I could, returning home to smelt it up and finish the greenhouse at night. Day 10 started with ending a beta controller lamprey. Ugly little booger, I'll tell you that much. But I noticed the greenhouse didn't work. Apparently because it's in the cave. Makes sense. I guess I forgot. So I took the time to dismantle the whole thing and bring it outside for a bit of yield. I kept the dino population in check on my little island by taking out this fire angi. But dear lord, this stone stego is tanky. So I will let you be. I crossed the water to a new location looking for things to kill for loot, so I did precisely that and was carefully inspecting every possible target. For example, I would hate to start fighting with a creature only to find out it has like 78,000 health a little bit too late. But once I had my fair share of fights, I got back to HQ to prepare special narcotics and arrows. Eleven started off with a healthy dose of soul farming. Also, being on the receiving end of the violence, of course, until I found a miracle stego, which, well, causes miracles upon death, apparently, so I gave it a fair shot, but it has high evasion, since my arrows all missed except for one that essentially did nothing at all, so we'll need to try again once we have something that can one-shot it. Another oddity was this loot chest that needs a ton of stuff to unlock it, so I'm excited to see if I can open at least one on this run. A pair of sanctuary boots were looted as well. Seems like the boosts are good for netting, so this set would be very nice for taming. Next up, the skill Dino Rage was unlocked to boost our dino damage in short bursts, and found a random unstable egg on the ground, so that's a good sign that with some egg snatching, we can progress into higher tiers if we're lucky to come across what we need. Here is where I got another very curious drop, a quest scroll. And even though this one requires like a thousand kills with a parasaur, I noticed that quests give paragon souls to power up your future tames. This mechanic of quests tickles my fancy very much, however the rest of the day I was reserving the hours for wiping out more weak dinos in order to progress. But on day 12 my crusade got ended by a blizzard parasaur that absolutely shredded me. Seems like a parasaur like that would make the quest actually doable. Since I was at home, I whipped up some early set tokens in the workbench in hopes to get a whole armor set for boosts, so here's what we got. Olympian legs, gifted boots, double sanctuary boots, prospector gloves, and avalanche legs. So no whole set, of course, to get a full set bonus, but we'll get there eventually. But it's wardrobe time, everybody! Applying some really snazzy skins, giving myself a stylish trim, and painting the armor, making this birdman more confident for his own good. To finish up, I just went ham on berry gathering and soul farming. Day 13, and I was now ready to unlock the Beastmaster armor and spear. The armor... Ain't gonna lie, it looks pretty sh**, but it is strong, and the spear looks pretty good, but isn't all that good it seems. So, I just put on my skins that I had from before, and placed down a egg collector. This doodad lets you put in female variant dinos, and then they just produce eggs in it. So, when it comes to kibble, I made as much of the basic kind that I could, prepared some arrows, and set out to tame the weakest variants that I possibly could find to have one egg producer of every type since I can't afford buckets of kibble for something OP at this point. So after a beta summoner egg was picked up, 
I tamed a Pearl Lystro, which is a resource variant. Further down the beach, I was just exploring, and I saw this glowing ball in the water. And I, you know, I can't resist anything that's shiny, so I dove in and got this Stone Omega Soul. Fancy little thing. I think it summons a boss or something. After some scouting on day 14, a reflective Moshops was added to our crew. It is a male, but that's okay. And after even more scouting, I attempted a summoner dialo chain, which without beating around the bush, went horribly. Later on, a Earth PT was ready to go and failed a cosmic team. You really win some and lose some in this one. What's cool is, you know, I took down this Omega Dodo and it dropped a spirit Omega Soul, so now I know how to get more of these. With the basic Siren Dilo under my belt now, I went to deposit the catches at base and continued with the basic taming spree. With a weak Gorgon Raptor claim that counts as a mythical variant and a Nightmare Egg stolen, I got to taming a Spectral Lystra, which is a ethereal type. I could not help but focus on a nearby fight between a Paragon Kentro and a unique dino named Pride. Uniques are, you know, pretty late game, but they are on our to-do list since they are hella strong, counting as like two variants or something like that. But for now, some demorphs rained on my parade, as they seem to do in every video that I've made in the past couple months. So back home once, up from my comfy bed, I restocked my arrows and headed back to my raft. Which I reached in the early hours of day 16. The fight between the two heavyweights seemed like it would take forever, so no loot goblin time for me to pick up the remains. Further down the beach, I got to a zone filled with Rexus, so this would be a good place to hang out to passively pick up souls in essence. Funnily enough, I got this ramshackle war chicken saddle, so if we get a god like Dodo, this could get very fun really quickly. So yeah, I just hung around the battles. Saw a really big wyvern in the forest and tried to ignore that, as well as a deathworm sand that pulled up to me but didn't seem to spawn anything. But needless to say, it was a tense spot to be in. Eventually, I did meet my end after having gotten my fair share of supplies, but I knew I needed a decent flyer ASAP. So, what better place to get a wyvern than to swim on over to the desert where I did find quite some fearsome wyverns indeed. And as much as I wanted to get one, I became lunch before I could even reach land. We'll be back once we're a little bit stronger for these foul lizards. With the hatchery placed on day 17, I remembered that I did have that basic Earth PT from before. So when saddled, I named it Toph, and together we flew out for a poly run. On this trip, I learned that Toph has the sort of poison attack. Seems neat, but for now, the damage is really low since it is basic tier, of course. With Polly now gathered up, I ran into a bit of an issue. A pygmy wyvern started chasing me, so I just in time managed to pot up Toph before I met my end to this flying little rat pack. When it comes to progressing, I wanted to make a accelerator for the egg collector to, you know, you guessed it, get more eggs. And I thought that that was crafted in the soul compressor for some reason, and for that I needed utility souls, so I began to farm the wildlife for those specifically. On the 18th day, we got ourselves a basic supernova Pelagornis, counting as a cosmic variant, got some utility souls as per our objective, and recruited a Nightmare Moshops, followed up by a new quest scroll, and I'm happy to know that you can accept multiple quests at the same time. Slowly but surely, I figured out that dinos in Omega are not yet OP with like 80k health. No, no, no. Since I saw this Omega Paragon Dilo with 1.5 million health just casually going on a stroll. So the sky is the limit and how strong things can be if this guy is out and about. With the last utility souls collected, I got the soul compressor made and whoop de do it's not what I needed to make the accelerator. So my next guess was that I needed the soul grinder and that needs a ton of souls and Above all else, really hard to get high tier essence. Day 19, and after getting souls in many ways possible, like cheesing them, of course, that is what I do, and getting more quests along the way, I ended up in the swamp for some reason that I can't remember, when a super lag hit me in the middle of a fight. I could do nothing, and Toph was just gliding off into the distance. And well, once the lag passed, I very quickly met my end in the confusion, and the same goes for Toph, sadly. Rest in pieces. Back in the cave, I whipped up a crazy crazy potion table, and well, I just swapped the gender of any males that I had to females, so they could actually help me make eggs once integrated into the accelerator. There's so much grinding to do in this mod, and Papa needs egg stats, so just get in there. Day 20 was kind of short, besides from taming a Fiomia to get fertilizer going. I got an ice lacero, so that counts as a basic elemental. And that's kind of it, just got fertilizer cooking in the composter and integrated the lystro. The next day, I got as a companion compi tamed up, which is a summoner, but its minions still ate me alive, even after taming, and that's actually kind of interesting information to know, since in case we ever have a creature that can summon minions, they'll stick around even after death. 
I hope. A ultimate PT was taken out for its essence and a frenzy jug bug was tamed for our basic rage variant. What sent me home was this odd blue thingy that I don't really know what it was, but now I'm back in the cave and just integrated the tames and placed out a feeding trot. 22 and more basic variant tames were recruited like this blizzard parasaur being nature and a meltdown lystro being our new unstable variant, just like my mental health. Here is also where your boy learned some crucial info, like when hitting a loot PT, everything takes offense to that and piles on you. I might have done a bad. I might have done a really big bad. Escape maneuver! <laughs> That's what I thought. With the crafting dodo also tamed, I can relax knowing that at least when it comes to basic dinos, all variants are implemented in the egg collector for production. This meant that on day 23, I moved on to taming all beta variants, but first, I hunted down betas left and right for their essence to make the beta kibble that I was going to need. I witnessed firsthand how a druid dino summoned a grove of sorts with trees and whatnot, so druid dinos seemed like something that's right up my RPG playing alley. With more beta essence collected, something happened. What exactly? I don't really know. As I'm writing the script, I can't really read my own handwriting from the moment, but something something about Omega Lead Nuke. Whoa. But yeah, that night I prepared some beta mythical kibble for on day 24, I made a long trip across the seas and forests for this big boy, a Colossus Trike, a mythical dino that is pretty strong, but it had a entourage of trike bodyguards around and I really still wanted to give this a go since I needed some defense for farming. So with some sleeping bags placed, I began to fire my trikes, making everyone very much so upset with me. And after some hit and run tactics, I saw that there was no way in hail that I was going to be able to knock this thing out due to its massive torpor bar with the arrows that I brought. And well, just as expected, that got followed up with me getting stunned and stumped into the mud. I need something. Anything to help me at this point in time. A quarter in and I was grinding that essence and narcotics when I met my new nightmare fuel. Everyone, welcome this spiritual dodo reaper that will fuck up your mama, your brother, your step cousin, and above all else, you. And man, everything seemed like it was out to get me. I felt like on day 25, it just comprised solely of getting my ass whooped. Your boy needs a flyer stat. Amongst the carnage, I did get a quest scroll to kill 2,000 dinos on a lystro. And man, if we pull that off, buddy sure would be proud. The easier quest was this one right here. Just kill 10 dodos on foot for a random paragon soul. That seems pretty easy. So after I took out enough dodos to fill a whole key FC deep fryer, I noticed they don't count unless they are variants. Vanillas don't count. So with that knowledge, I went ham on the chickens and farmed until I got sent back to my soft, warm bed. With knockout arrows restocked on day 26 and beta kibble of almost each type made, I packed up my gear and ended up just farming more beta essence and souls since no low tier tame seemed to be out and about at that time that I could use with my meager amount of kibble. So 27 is when I went into overdrive to tame all beta variants now with new dinos on the map, and no matter what. I was going to succeed, no matter what's been thrown at me. What the f*** is going on here? Hello? What? Oh yeah, just take my bow. I am highly confused. What the f***? After a chase, a beta random jug bug was tamed, as well as a beta Frenzy Lystro and a Beta Ice Oviraptor that got one shot by a flippin' Dodo of all things. No. Had me just a little bit salty. Oh, you f***ing piece of sh But we made up for it with a Guardian Mosh Hops tame. The spree went into day 28, where I died in the morning as I was trying to tame a Trilobite in a very explosive way. But I did get to tame a few new recruits at least to fill our ranks, them being a Beta Thunderstorm PT, Warp Mosh Hops, and a Wind Lystro. And you would think that we would be close to completing all beta variants, but no, we have quite a way to go. 29 and I scraped some things together to make a warp bow, basically a hitscan bow that fires trank arrows, even underwater. So more taming it is. But I wanted a flyer, so after some swimming around, I got to this level 150 beta Gorgon PT. And this bow just does amazingly. Thankfully, I just managed to pot up this new PT tame in time as a flying dimensional manta Whoa. took me out just a fraction of an instant later. I did get this really good quest earlier, just killing 10 dodos to get a paragon soul. What? Yep. 
you. You got such easy credits. <laughs> Wait, no, hold, hold the phone. You should be happy for me. No, f you. You should suffer the same way I had to suffer. No, 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 We're no. I no, having no, to kill no. thousands of creatures to get a Paragon Soul. The Dodo quest was completed and rewarded me with a Dimetrodon Paragon Soul, and I can't really complain since I don't know what I'll be using endgame, to be honest. After being chased off from this vampire Ichti Tame by a lead, I gave a crack at taming this beta compi, but its friends made sure to let me know of their disapproval of the situation. I eventually did manage to tame this pesky beta tracker compi and focus on getting a beta dilo, but with this ultimate dilo nuking me into smithereens, I proceeded to lure it far, far away from my true target, which was this reactive one that I still met my end to due to its seemingly radioactive gas. Once I did get the KO, the gas lingered around and very much so still hurts, so I had to wait it out with some popcorn in hand as I watched a mosh pit of trikes pummel a poor dodo into the beach. But even at a safe distance, the dodo wanted no witnesses, so it's just, uh, you know, took me out with a poison ball. You're never safe, ever, it seems. Once the fight was over, I saw the gas was gone, so this beta reactive dialo was ours. Day 3-0. And with a beta metallic lamprey tamed at my front door, I integrated all of the new recruits that I had gotten and was only missing three more beta variants. To take to the skies, I saddled the Gorgon PT and named it Oliver Queen, and together we could zip around free as can be to speed up our tames. But I gotta say, we do look like prehistoric arrow. After a pygmy dilo was tamed, I just never stopped grinding and at that same breath, never stopped dying. Like the singularity trilobite. I just touched the dude and all hell has to break loose. But I was determined to tame it since I already added Torpor to it, so thanks to the warp bow hit scan, I safely landed the KO safely from my raft and made one final dive to complete this tame and picked it up just in the nick of time. Once this patch was integrated, I only needed Beta Nightmare to complete our set. And just like that, the Vampire Lystro was tamed. The Beta tier was completed, it is what I thought. Apparently the Pygmy that I tamed wasn't Beta, so I got a Pygmy Beta Lystro, shoved it into the collector and there. Now we are set on that tier. I also found the time to make this ethereal spear that seems pretty neat and made 10 early set tokens. Really wanting to get soul scream and gravity armor from them, yet none of those items were obtained. But eh, at least some of the sets are slowly getting to be done, hopefully. Like Avalanche here, you would be cool to use this for some ice tames. So I made another batch of tokens using up all of my resources for them to hopefully complete at least one set and for the avalanche well I didn't get the boots or gloves to complete it. The RNG in this mod is something else let me tell you. To move on to alpha tier I would need to farm prime meat and alpha essence. So the scavenging began looking for fights like this one right here to pick some up and avoiding dying like when I was chased off by a cool looking wyvern but slowly and surely I did get that meat. And a lucky soul, weirdly enough. A body nearby must be from a good loot creature, so I lured the aloes away and got to loot the loot off of a lucky loot bag for some basic health potions as well as a ton of others. Not too bad, I would say. However, no moment is peaceful as ya boy had to outrun wyverns yet again. Mammoths seem to be the easiest target for Prime at the moment, so I focus on those, passively getting essence and souls no matter where I go. All is well, but that is always where things start coming down, and in this case, in more ways than one as something made my PT go into a blind rage and swoop in to fight these carnivores down below, resulting in not only its death, but also my own. But at least the fruits of this expedition were useful enough to get my first alpha kibbles going. And well, 33 and I'm back to using canoes again. I had looted a harpoon launcher earlier, so I made some net projectiles to go with it, as I had some sanctuary armor pieces that improve net time and range, which will help to do what we gotta do, tame a ton of alphas. Like this alpha companion Lystro that summoned a whole flippin' golem on me, scaring me, but he just stood there. So we're cool, I guess. The tame was completed, peacefully, along with a alpha reflective compi that was nearby. Also a nifty little thing that the sanctuary helmet does is you can breathe underwater. So I wanted to tame this here Alpha Earth Trilobite since they are also one kibble tames, but the sharks aggroed from a mile away. For those that know Omega, I don't have the sanctuary leggings yet. So I retreated and tamed a Alpha Stone Oviraptor as my resource egg layer, and shortly after, got annihilated by a Prime Para, and well, at least that's three Alphas to integrate to our collection. 34 and Alphas continued to be tamed along with grinding for Prime Meat, and staying on track with getting my butt kicked at every corner. Okay then, just gotta spawn on the raft and... Nice. I need a new flyer. And I can't make enough kibble for a strong tame just yet. I still tried to get this beta volatile featherlight, 
And to say that I got one shot is putting it very lightly. As I was getting prime meat from this Bronto, a big fight broke out nearby, so the loot goblin in me kicked in and got some stuff gathered up, right before I got blown up. This day, man, has been very, very painful. After more AoE looting around the place, running around like an idiot and killing weaker Brontos, I got some prime, but just so little. I would need to get some more if I want to break past Alpha tier. And being blown up by a wyvern really wasn't helping at this point. I thought to myself, the Kairukus in the ice would be the easiest prime to get, so I whipped up one of all Alpha kibbles that I still needed, in case I would come across some tames on the way on over there. But first, on day 35, to make the most of my meat trip, I wanted this multi-tool, but I was short of some resource souls. Once some set mannequins were placed to keep my sets all nice and organized, I got to hunting, getting three souls in total, and made the darn thing. And combined with the prospector armor, it gathers a ton of stuff. So resources, as you can see, shouldn't be much of a problem anymore. Plus, it feels great torpor damage to resource dinos. The voyage commenced on day 36, but first, heading to the swamp for flowers and shrooms, and also killing some primes on the way that I could almost auto-delete myself due to the reflectability here. But eventually I did get to this swamp cave, inside which I got tons of shrooms from the trees, some oil and pearls from the water, plus deep, deep within the trenches, a patch of flowers was spotted and subsequently harvested up, so I am stacked. With my haul, thankfully, I made it back safely to the raft and on back home. 37 is when I made some refertilizer, thinking that I would use this hatchery at some point. But it is time to go on our penguin mission. Stopping for primes, of course, whenever I could, and moving on along till I not only tamed some females over there, but also took out multiple little ones for their prime meat, which was very, very much so a lot, considering my armor and tool. Once I outswam these flippin' leads and got home safely, I got the penguin set up and redirected my focus on a strong flyer that I could farm with. My eyes were set on this Beta Overlord Blood Crystal Wyvern level 132. Overlord is Summoner, by the way. I snuck towards it ever so cautiously when I pounced it with a net, and to my dismay, the stone gates I had brought weren't placing themselves nicely the way I wanted to on top of it, and with a giga nearby, I started to panic a little bit and began blasting this darn winged beast until it broke free and took me out in one quick swoop. Thankfully, your boy had some sleeping bags placed nearby, so I could continue the hunt, and after a long day of firing arrows, I saw a KO in the distance. I had to be quick to feed it though, since a Omega Deodon was next to our prize. I did land the feed, but I still got killed right after. Once respawned, I sprinted towards it, made a leap of faith right onto the wyvern's back, and made a quick escape before the Deodon would surely one-shot our new friend. Oh, we did it, we're alive. Oh, we're home free, baby, we got it! Let's go! Now, this beast is a sight to behold indeed, and as it's a overlord, I named it Eins. And with these here Piper Gloves, its minion summons will get extended time. So of course, I needed to test him out. And these little summons are really cool, but barely do any damage at all, surprisingly. And while my Dino Rage skill up the damage a little bit, it's... I guess good enough to farm weak dinos for essence and souls, is what I thought. But the Wyvern summons have a really hard time fighting things that are small, it seems. Plus, they are slow as hell. So, they basically will only serve as a escape distraction. Like, killing this PT here alone took forever, so I was thinking, you know, maybe to kill Alphas, I need an Alpha. And I ain't gonna lie, I'm not too satisfied with Eins over here after all this. Let's hope these 20 set tokens turn up with something good. And I did get my first Soul Scream item. Avalanche is now only missing the feet, but Sanctuary is done, thankfully. And Olympian here is missing its gloves. Can't forget the Piper parts that I got, since I do love the summoners in this mod, and the mannequins I dare say are looking mighty fine so far. Day 40 and it's back to the alpha grind, baby! Starting with a Astral Trilo, and man, these Sanctuary set items are coming in clutch now! I swim fast, breathe underwater, and dinos don't aggro! Up next, Alpha Plague Tamed had some firing practice with this fairy Suilacanth that I got recruited. Tried to Ignore the root leads and integrate the whole bunch and restock on Tranks. 41 was an intensive day of alpha tier taming, like an invisible stalker right here. And one thing that I was grateful for was, you know, that Eins can fly, making trips across this massive map just so much faster. And if you remember my Wyvern Eclipse, it looked really similar. But back to the task at hand, got to tame a Harvest Trilo, and same goes for a Psychosis. The plan was to continue on day 42, but this Starfire Trilo just had to one-shot me. So, time to integrate the haul we had and use it as a arrow pit stop, and out we go, 
near the desert biome and dive deep, dodging its meteors this time and have the same result like last time. Thankfully, on a second attempt with an arrow that hit true, this one was now ours to take home. And just as I think that I had a grasp of things, this explosive one, well, explodes. And you guessed it, one shot. Things are getting out of hand fairly quickly. So again, a more long-range approach seemed to be more successful, landing the tame. There. With this, the last little buggers were integrated. Alpha tier is now complete. But that just means the pressure will ramp up with the prime tier being up next. Now, I know on day 43 that I needed the gravity set if I wanted to be efficient with tames, since it helps with torpor damage, so I started to farm supplies like souls for many, many set tokens, as I needed to be able to deal more torpor to these higher tier dinos. Once I had my fill, 18 tokens were made, and almost every single one was pretty much entirely just dupes. With one gravity piece and no soul scream, and I do want that one since Natural kept bugging me to get it. 44 was the same, I want my gravity set, and I'm not stopping till I have it. So 11 tokens were made at the end of the day for many items, but only one new gravity piece, the gloves. 45, grind some more, yes sir, snatching up everything that I can and make sure to outspeed this terrifying wing boy. And I found a good way to get souls passively without risking eins, which was hovering over these what I like to call mosh pits. I don't know, it's like there's just spots where tons of dinos spawn and begin to throw down much to my pleasure. So nighttime came around and I made 18 more set tokens, which as you can expect had many dupes inside, as well as a double gravity dupe. Just a little bit salty, just, just, just a smidge. But hey, most sets now only need like one more piece each to be complete. 46 and a change of scenery was in order, so I tried to farm in the desert, but it was just not as efficient. Less dinos and more annoying wyverns, so back to the snow I go, grabbing the souls and loot bags that I came across. And as night set in, thanks to the tokens, the Tempest set was now complete, and everything else was, you guessed it, dupes. Just look at all these useless gravity pieces, man. I'm just, I'm, I'm so close. 47 is pretty much the same, just grinding a ton, making 13 sets, and complete the avalanche set, plus got gravity and soul scream legs. And 48 was the point where I made a decision. See, I grinded like the days before, made the tokens that night, opened them up, and yeah, sure, the Olympian set is now done. It's pretty cool. And got the gravity hat. Sounds perfectly fine, but literally, the sets Eclipse, Bloodlust, Prospector, Abruption, Piper, Gravity, and Soul Scream, all of them needed one more piece each to be completed, and I had way too many dupes of every single set. So it is time to pull out the businessman in me and use it to set up some trades. Since this server is played on by my patrons, YouTube channel members, and Twitch subs, and has people trading all the time. So I was grinding for supplies for Prime Kibble during the day, and had sent out a trade offer into my Discord. And during the day, Arch came around here in order to do some exchanges. I offered to give him one of each of my dupe items of each set, and he gave me the items that I needed for each of the sets to be completed. But what he really wanted most was the gifted chest plate that I had, so I tossed that in there as well since apparently it's kinda rare. It feels good, man, just knowing that almost all sets that I can get at this point are pretty much done. Day 50, halfway there, and all Prime Kibble types were made just in time so we can pick up the pace. And this right here is the Soul Grinder that I wanted so badly, and within which I can craft the Accelerator that I wanted, but it needs 25 Soul Shards, so we'll get to that soon enough. As for why I wanted the Gravity set to help tame better, here is why. The set gives a 300% boost to warp bow damage, so this should deal torpor very nicely. And with that being said, it is prime trilo time. Starting off with this prime dimensional and man, that is just so much easier. But I did frequently swap to the sanctuary set for breathing and stealth in the water. With this one tamed, I flew on off with Eins to speed up our travel and only ended up dying in a deep dive later on. Since I was home now, not willingly, but here we are. I decided it was finally time to also check what the Soul Scream armor is good for since it was so highly recommended by Nat. So I put it on and where did the water go? It's like all gone. Every last drop. And I can run around on the sea floor like it's not even there. Well, it makes sense now why this would be useful for trilobite taming. So getting this prime gorgon tamed up was a cakewalk. 51 is where the primes really started to come in, starting with this overlord, next up collective, Ice and then Stalker subsequently tamed, only for Prime Tsunami to absolutely obliterate me. But once back at my raft, a swift warp bow shot landed the KO, and there it is, all tamed up. Just in time to escape from a super fast lead, to whom I said, No, you may not boop my raft, but 
please sure let me poop the raft. Nay, I say. But the day was ended with a prime pearl ready to make us some eggs. Day 52, once this batch was implemented, I decided to grind a Omega Soul for Soul Shards, and whoop de flippin' do, it gives a grand total of one. So we need like 24 more Omega kills to get the Accelerator. The deaths ensued, as you can expect. So I decided to make a pit stop to gather up some honey nearby for most of the afternoon, which the bees frowned upon even without facial expressions. But their hard labor allowed me to make a SSB hive in the evening, since the higher tier kibble is gonna need veggie cake, so best get started now. A midnight swim landed me this prime tracker tame, 53, and three more primes were left to go to complete the tier, so here's a knockback that was recruited, and after a spazzed out hunt of this common suilacanth, we landed this tame for our cosmic eggs. After a long flight on Ein's Airlines here, we reached our final target, a prime reactive that got the old snooze treatment, to wake as our friend. So on day 54 is when the prime tier was done. So it is time to move on to ultimate, but preparations are needed for the kibble, like essence and cakes. And to get the essence, I need a new fighter, which will be this glorious prime ice storm dodo since I have the unique war chicken saddle. Guys, I need a name for the most fierce John dodo. John Cena! Okay then. <laughs> John Cena it is. Beep, 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 beep. I have tamed myself the ultimate killer, greatest threat known to this arc. A 145 prime ice storm dodo named John Cena. <laughs> I wish you all the best on losing your dodo. John Cena will be protected, okay? Don't listen to Nat. He's just a big meanie. He has 30,000 health. That's an awful Don't Omega. laugh at John Cena! <laughs> <laughs> du, 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 du. Okay, so this unique saddle, War Chicken, the dodo's true nature is revealed. Movement speed increased by 300%, attack speed increased by 300%, 10% chance to self-frenzy on attack, attacks cause bleed, and is immune to damage impulse. So, you're using a saddle that's going to boost up its melee attack damage on a tame that will primarily be doing its damage through abilities. I see no flaws in this. Come on, John Cena, don't listen to him, we'll be fine. Everybody, say hello to John Cena and myself. What the fuck is that? <laughs> it's John Cena, what are you talking about? Look at him, he's gorgeous. I thought it was gonna be a big dodo, not He is bigger than other dodos, he's average! <laughs> I'm sure he has a great personality, okay? He's above average, okay? Here's where I figured something out that is crucial to progression. See, I was not convinced that Ainz's damage was accurate, so I removed my classes and gave another DPS test, and we do so much more damage now. I can only assume that the Beastmaster class was overriding the Omega stats when used, bringing them down to vanilla numbers rather than Omega numbers. I was nerfing myself this whole time! So I'm not the class anymore, but I am still a Beastmaster at heart. I'm gonna do a melee attack once, just to see how much damage she does. Okay, not, not whole- oh! Oh, he attacks fast though! Oh man, he's not half bad. Now, ultimates shouldn't be a problem to take out consistently. And even though this boogeyman fear me into a frantic state, John Cena managed to absolutely shred it, which brought me very much so a ton of joy. Oh, that was so easy. But it wasn't all smooth sailing since we almost died to a ultimate tsunami, so maybe it's not that easy, maybe it's not that easy, maybe it's not that easy. We would still need to choose our fights very carefully, is what I thought as we waddled into the forest to some safety. So the grinding continued into day 55 with Ainz while John was healing, managing to end the life of two ultimates. Man, Ainz was strong after all. I am so sorry for being upset with you. We even managed to slay a Omega Dilo. Slowly, but we did it which means we can work on getting the souls for the shards for the accelerator now. After much ultimate farming, both our fighters needed a good long rest at home, so we just suited up in some prospector gear, beat up a wood anky to get its sap. With that out of the way, I got to preparing the other things we need for veggie cakes, like stims and restarting the crops in the farm. 56 continued with the cakes, making as many as I possibly could, and got to working on ultimate kibble. Almost getting one of each type, I just ran out of essence, but my fighters are still weak, so I might as well tame the ultimate trilobites that I can, like this ultimate cloner, and prep more sedatives for the upcoming taming spree. It is what I thought that I would do on day 57, until I learned that healing potions are very effective. 
So the main teams got nice and healthy and continued to get essence. What had me tilted was a Pego stole and ate one of my ultimate kibbles that I struggled to make, losing my nerve to a vanilla creature of all things. But yes, farmed essence until John was weak and we returned to HQ. Finish up all the ultimate kibble that I needed on day 58. Restocked my tranks and here we go with the ultimate, getting us a taming trilobite, make a insanely long trip across the lands, enjoying the scenery, and ending off the day by taming a ultimate siren. And same goes for 59, getting a ultimate zombie, ice, and eruption, and dying to a absorbent attempt. To which I returned, and this one took quite some time since it had quite the high torpor since it is a tank, but eventually its 150k torpor was all filled up, and so we could claim this one as our own. Finally, after multiple excruciating deaths, we got a Gamma Ray as the cherry on top. With a brutal tamed on day 60, I began grinding essence for sedatives, got restocked, integrated our water bugs, and went to get the last three types. Thinking that I had this spiritual trial bite in the bag, I couldn't have been further from the truth, but a teleporter meg just zipped onto me from who knows where and ended my booty cheeks. Once back, I fed the bug and claimed it, as well as a ultimate detonate. And there we go, with the metal ultimate tamed on day 61, and upon arrival at home midday to integrate these boogers, ultimate tier is now done. So finally, we can work on the omega tier, and to get omega tames for eggs, we need prime jerky that I had been making this whole time, and more cakes, and of course omega essence. So I hunted down weak omegas, almost lost, I'd to some lystros of all things, ended up getting a Lystro Paragon Soul after I dealt with everything in the vicinity piling on me like I'm a ball pit. Even lost some knockout arrows to another Pego. But I lived and looted this quest to get Lystro Paragon Souls. And all signs are pointing to me getting an insanely OP Lystro and I'm gonna make it happen. As motivated as I was, I guess I just didn't read this situation correctly, as I figured this measly Omega Lystro was gonna be easy. However, it was a threat, as it summoned a black hole in the sky, pulled John Cena and myself right into its center, and that right there, everybody, is the end of the epic tale of John Cena, the Ice Storm Dodo. Rest in peace, you little chicken nugget. So I returned to the scene to retrieve the war chicken saddle and thought to myself we need a Omega Slayer and you would think that I would want to tame something as OP looking as this 169 Ultimate Explosive Rex but here's the thing, to get OP dinos you need to feed your tame Paragon Souls from the same species of Paragon so the rarer the dino you want to boost the harder it is since Paragons are double rare that way so I need to focus on getting strong common tames so with a ton of more sedatives being produced, plus veggie cakes and health potions on the way, I got to farming essence yet again and figured this ultimate essence Microraptor would do the trick. However, everyone and their mom took offense to this and body slammed me into the ground. As I awoke, I came to the realization that since Eins was right there with me in the moment, he must have met his end as well. And considering John is also dead, I am all alone with no powerful tame to back me up or move me around. I need to flip this situation around somehow. So I scanned the spawns for the rest of the day, thinking what my new course of action could possibly be. Day 63 and yours truly, as always, has a plan. First, I need a flyer to traverse the land, so I swam with my raft till I got to this ultimate ice PT, and once this banana air looking f decided to land, I got to KO it with lightning speed, tamed it up, and dubbed it Yellow Snow, because it's yellow, and it's a nice variant, and I have the humor level of a child. With its cool ice shot, we could take out enemies like Omegas very slowly, but that's not what this one here is for. No, no, my friends. This one is strictly to get us to our real target. On day 64, I whipped up some Omega Summoner Kibble and set out with Yellow Snow to tame a Omega Overlord Deinonychus. Look, I know I just said to tame common dinos for easy paragon boosting, but one, it's a Deinonychus, and I love a Deinonychus. It's Omega, it's a summoner variant for little minion dinos, and has purple in its feathers. And I can't pass up such a bleed army. So, I netted it and tried to place the gates, but I don't know what's with me this run, I just can't place them well enough, so... I got out, ate my face, as you would expect, and I just kept up the pressure since I had sleeping bags nearby. 
Eventually, I landed a good gate placement, flung my knockout arrows right into its feathered foot, and got myself this amazing Omega Overlord Deinonychus. Happily, we flip-flapped on home, saddled them up, and named it Sangre, because I am expecting the bleed to be amazing, as we are going to be a mini horde of Deinonychus. So then, to test them out, I equipped the Piper set for summoning bonuses. And here is the stat, 16k per slash, absolutely shredding things all around. As for the babies... Big Papa is so proud of all of you, brings a tear to my f***ing eye. I see them doing around 8k at the moment, and after boosting melee on Sangre, it seems like the babies also get boosted, so everything considered. This 200k carbo was taken out in like 2 seconds. Plus, the babies, I think, are getting 75% defense boost based on these Piper things right here. Not sure if that's what's being applied or not, but ladies and gentlemen, I think we found our new main tame, and I am excited. So, 65, I needed to catch up with the Essence grind, and Sangre helped me to do just that. So, Omegas were being slayed left and right, while I also kept my eyes open for a Unique. And for those that don't know, Uniques are special dinos that rarely spawn and are a mix of two variants and have crazy stat multipliers. And let me tell you, there's like 300 different Uniques, so who knows what we will find. By the end of this day, we took down 10 Omegas, not too shabby I would say. 66, my notes say, grind souls, kill everything, and that is precisely what I did. Plus, the Soul Raptor gave us a juicy haul of souls, and we need them by the thousands for boss fights later. Also, the occasional Paragon was taken out of its misery, and some fights, though, still were very close calls, almost meeting our demise multiple times. But Sangre stood strong and helped me grind all day long. This went on into day 67, so that I could do this, grind Omega Souls for the Soul Shards we needed earlier. So there it is, folks. The Accelerator. Only took us forever to get, but here it is. Installed into the Egg Collector for faster production rate, for Daddy is making the mother of all omelets. 68 is what I cooked up, one of all Omega Kibble types, stocked up on some amazing arrows, for it is time for our final trilobite spree for Omega Eggs. So, we got a ton, like Omega Overlord, Nature, Collective, Vampire, and to end off such a productive day, a singularity. And we're not just quite done yet. More Omega Trilobites on day 69, like an Omega Gorgon, Detonate, Astral, and well, as for the resource variant, there was this metal one that just wouldn't take enough Torpor, so after stacking some up on it, I left it behind to get myself a Omega Crafting, Waterstorm, and lastly, Psychosis. Now about that Omega Metal Trilobite, I made some special Omega Arrows just for the occasion, and returned to this prehistoric creepy crawly, and even with the Omega Arrows it took forever, but we stuck it out and succeeded the tame, allowing me to integrate all Omega Trilobites and the occasional Coelacanth to complete the tier. So now that we can get eggs of all variants, we are sure that we can make any tier of Unique Kibble that we want, since for Unique Kibble, you need all egg variants of the same tier. Our trilobite taming sprees are over. So now my attention is focused to the boss summons and tames. But to summon anything, we need the Omega Beacon. So to make that, I suited up in full prospector gear that makes me look like I got chromed out more than a lunatic in Mad Max to get a truckload of pearls and even more so metal ore. The ore I got to smelting in the evening since I need like 2,500 ingots for the boss beacon. Day 71 was pretty straightforward, just grinding paragons to boost future tames, as well as omegas for their souls for bosses and their essence for omega kibble since, well, we need them for our bossing team. But 72 had something very special. I got some beta unique kibble together to go and tame this frostbite unique that spawned in, a ice storm zombie direwolf. Sure, it's just a beta tier, but it is still unique. Nothing could ruin my happiness since I always would have wanted one. Uh, but that statement that I just said, that cannot be further from the truth since uh, something can. I was luring dinos away from the taming area, but this Omega self-destruct saber surprised me. And in the confusion of trying to not lose sangre, my brain went into fight flight mode and killed it, which lit its fuse and wiped me and Sangre off of the face of the Ark. Man, that has me feeling all sorts of ways, from mad to sad to very confused on what just happened. And I really, I really liked Sangre, okay? Helped us progress so very much. 
but we cannot let its death be in vain. Still later in the day, I tracked down Frostbite, fired my arrows to land the knockout, and succeeded the tame. Just looking at its levels and everything, man, I don't know if this trade was worth it, Lamau. So, our main fighter is gone, and we still need a bossing team. Thankfully, we had gotten enough Omega Essence to make quite a bunch of Omega Kibbles, so I made 10 of the mythical variety and flew out to this Omega Fairy Deodon, whom I separated from its pack, and tamed it up with relative ease. Considering it's Omega, it must be beefy, and because it's a fairy, it can heal. So this might be the best healer around. Now on day 73, I'm looking for a tank, and a Absorbent Carbon Nemesis would do nicely, since Absorbents basically take all the damage in an area that would go to allies to themselves. So I made six Ultimate Guardian Kibble, and took my sweet time to knock this Chonky Turtle out, landing the KO underwater, and succeeding this tame as well. Don't worry that it's not Omega tier, I'll fix that later. So, I have a tank and a healer, time to get some DPS, and just a smidge of Omega Essence, for something very special coming very soon. Day 74, the day the most unlikely DPS dino was hunted. With 8 Omega Cosmic Kibble and Omega Arrows at the ready, I flew on over to this level 170 Omega Tech Starfire Anki. Its stats are pretty bad, but considering it has a very high level and I have a unique Anki saddle, I figured this would still end up just fine. So when my final arrow punched through its steel plating, I fed this chunky fella for it to be our ally. And on the way home, I got to taking out more high tier Omegas and Paragons, and once arrived in our cave, whipped out this unique saddle for the Yankee that just boosts defense, damage, and adds stuns. It's pretty much everything that we need. Looking at our team, it is a bit of a wacky bunch, but we have all three typical RPG roles. But of course, they need names. And since I'm such a RuneScape nerd and never can shut the f*** up about it, I named the turtle Torag, the Yankee Aram, and the Deodon Darok. And with all of them saddled up, it was time to test out Aram. With no melee boost, it's 11k damage per tick, which is very nice with this massive star in the sky. And after boosting melee, it was like 26k per tick, and it's an AoE. So farming souls just got a whole lot easier. So that is what we were going to do on day 75. Taking out Omegas like it is absolutely nothing, plus Paragons like a Carbon Emis and a Paragon Anki. And so we just did that all day, just farming as much as we could till we got stacked up fairly well. Now on day 76 is when Torag got a power boost. This is the special thing that I mentioned, as I made a Carbo Omega token with the Carbo Paragon soul that we had gotten earlier. I fed it to him and that turns it from a ultimate to a Omega. And on top of that, I fed it another Carbon Emis Paragon Soul, so it was now at a whopping 11.2 million health. That right there gave me so much hope that we have a shot at beating some bosses. As for Aram, I had that Anki Paragon Soul from earlier, but apparently it does not work since my Anki is tech, and the Paragon is not, which is a shame. Might be impossible to Paragon our main damage dealer, so uh, that took some of that hope that I just mentioned away that we could beat bosses, so at this point it's anyone's game. So I made another metal run for the boss beacon and farmed Omegas as I was thinking what I could possibly do to add to my team so that we would stand a chance. So here is the plan on day 77, I need to be able to boost my dino's power and that can be done with this here ultimate frenzy parasaur that I managed to tame. Its ability basically just boosts the DPS of all allies in an area pretty much. And considering this day I also took out two parasaur paragons, you bet your sweet bippy that we're gonna get it to omega tier. That's why I grinded all of these omegas for the rest of the day since every tier upgrade is like a hundred of the essence that you want. Even got to upscale my low tier essence to as much omega kind as I could. That got our frenzy up to omega tier on day 78. Perfect. Our buff dino is on par with our other tames right now. And the perfect thing that would go with this composition is a dino that can debuff the boss, which would be this Omega Banshee Dilo. It can help us since its roar weakens the enemies somehow, I think. So I got them all tamed up easy peasy and the two Dilo Paragons so that we can boost it twice and named it Guthan to follow our RuneScape themed names here. After more and more farming, I made some Omega Ethereal Kibble and went out to tame this here Omega Astral Raptor. Astral can go into a sort of like dimensional ghost form and run through enemies to add more debuffs. So with a net flung at it and arrows impaling its body, it turned into my friend, for whom I got a Raptor Paragon Soul at night and just upgraded him smack dab in the middle of the desert and named him Varak. 
But our team is not just done yet, oh no 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 no, as I made some Omega Rage Kibble to tame our next member, a Omega Brutal Ant for Bleeds. Look, I know it doesn't look like a bossing dino, and none of mine do, but I'm desperate here, okay? Don't judge me. This one was tamed pretty easily, and was dubbed Carol. And thanks to this paragon that had sacrificed its soul to me, I got it upgraded once as well. Thankfully, at some point, I had looted this basic BP for a saddle for dinos that can't have saddles, so that gives Carol here the defense it needs, which was followed up with saddling up everyone else that still needed one. And you might be asking why I named the Frenzy Para Jacinto. Well, my girlfriend saw him and said it looked like a Jacinto. So, if Jacinto dies, may the Lord have mercy on my soul. So let's recap our bossing squad that bring the meaning to the term, it is what it is. We have the Omega Brutal Ant Carol for Bleed, Omega Astral Raptor named Varak for debuffs, Omega Absorbent Carbo named Torag for tanking, Omega Fairy Deodon named Derok for heals, Omega Banshee Dilo named Guthan for even more debuffs, Omega Starfire Anki named Aram for DPS, and last but not least, Omega Frenzy Parasaur named Jacinto who will scream very very loud to buff our team. So, if that's our squad, we need paragons of all of these common species. So I grinded and grinded and grinded, even taking out paragons that I didn't need since I might be able to strike up some trades to get what I do need. For example, Arch here stopped by my cave, to whom I gave my Anki Paragon Soul that was useless to me, in exchange for a Paragon Soul for Parasaur and Carbonemus, which helped me for sure, but as I saw his dinos that he had brought with him, I was humbled, to say the least. They were so OP, and it makes sense why he needed the Anki Paragon for what looks to be like an OP Bronto Anki hybrid. Like, what am I doing wrong? I want dinos that OP. But next, I made my way on over to the Swamp Cave to meet up with Sepwis. Inspecting his base, I got reminded that I truly am the worst builder known to date. Like, this place is massive! But as for the trade, I gave him a random assortment of four paragons that I didn't need in exchange for two of Dilo, one for Deodon, and one for Carbonemus, which is a pretty good deal if I do say so myself. 81 was productive but flew by since I doubled down on paragon grinding. And let me just say, thanks for watching up until this point, my lovelies, and if you're enjoying the show, consider hitting up the like and subscribe button. And thank you so very much to all of my lovely patrons whose monthly support is greatly appreciated. After all that grinding all day, I enjoyed upgrading my team, which was growing in power steadily, extremely quickly. But that is not all. Thanks to the metal runs, I had everything that I needed to craft the Omega Beacon for boss summons. But the true greatness of our team was about to join us on day 82, my lovelies. It is time to tame a unique Lystro named Collider. I saw it on the scanner and I needed it ASAP. Even if it's just beta, I can't pass up the opportunity to use a Lystro for bossing, who is a combo of Gorgon to turn enemies into stone and Meteor to, well, summon Meteors on our enemies. So the tame went super easy and was dubbed Omega Bud who looks like magma, sort of. But yes, I immediately went to take out two Lystro Paragons on the map since I'm getting this Mamma Jamma up to Omega tier no matter what. Plus, took out a Paragon Deodon and Carno. To end this day, I upgraded the team some more, plus ranked up Bud to a Prime tier. 83 was used up exclusively for Paragon hunting, so we took out a Carbo, Flying, and Carno. Almost died to that one. Had to heal up with Derok, which is very effective. And then a Para, another Flying Ant, and a Lystro. This went on into day 84, taking out a Paragon walking ant, and also took the opportunity to nuke these bunched up ants that spawned together for a quick boost in souls, which surprisingly landed me a unique saddle for a flying ant, which is not what we have, but as I was upgrading my team even further, my brain hit me with another brilliant plan. See, there was a unique flying ant on the map named Solar. Now, it might be hella weak, but I'm sure we can upgrade- And I killed it by accident. Perfect. Okay then, time for plan B. Make some Omega Cosmic Kibble and get this here Omega Singularity Flying Ant, who didn't notice me as much as when I hit it underwater, all stealthy like. It took a long time to knock out, but once night had already set in, we landed the KO and tamed it up. This tame, since it is cosmic, is now known as Star Lord whom I paragoned three times and saddled it with this amazing unique saddle that we just got for all of its amazing boosts and began to grind all day with it which had me thrilled since it deals like 345,000 damage per bite unleveled and its black hole ability is even more insane. This is what we needed to speed up our essence and soul grind which allowed for Omega Bud late in the evening to rank up to ultimate 
This lean, mean fighting machine grows in power. 86 was a day like many others, just grinding paragons, landing a parasaur, and man, let me just say that I love Star-Lord, he was so strong. Plus, making sure that on our travels to nuke any dinos that we came across for passive soul gathering. Also got a Paragon Carbo, Lystro, Daedon, Dilo, and another two Carbos. Torag is going to be a happy turtle. Day 87 started with making a imbue bench that allows me to make saddles better somehow. Grabbed up two more Paragons, that being Bronto and Hyena. And on the way home, the most remarkable thing happened on my travel through the woods. No flippin' way. No way. You are alive? What are you doing here? I thought I lost you, like, 50 days ago. I was overjoyed to be able to go home with Eins, and the excitement continued back home as Long Lad on the server arrived in front of my base with his big, big fish to trade some paragons, specifically four random of mine, for four Lystro paragons. We must get Bud here to brand new heights. For the remaining hours, I did the obvious Omega Essence grind. The highlight, though, was getting a unique trike saddle, which surely would fetch a good Paragon price. Day 88 was one of great importance as our beloved Omega Bud finally became Omega Tier and not just that, got Paragoned up five times. So everyone, let's give him a spin with its Gorgon Stare and Meteor Crash. Oh, I like that. I like that very much. Wonderful, truly a outstanding performance by Bud right here. But we can go even further. We will not stop. So more paragons needed to fall before us so we can continue on with this buddy bonanza. But a trade offer came in. Giz had wanted my unique trike saddle, so I was more than willing to give it to him when he was willing to give me a unique raptor and carbon emma saddle for it. A raptor saddle is one thing, but this carbo saddle... Oh my buddies, this just got very exciting since now we can tank better and reflect back some damage. You no know, baby, the bossing is closing in and we need to kick our team into overdrive. So Paragon hunting it is for all of day 89, getting six Paragons in total, most of which were useful for our current team composition. And 90 was spent on the exact same grind, but getting any other Paragon that the map had to offer. Even got the Lone Wolf unique saddle at one point. All this annihilation required extensive traveling across the map, but secured more useful Paragons in the evening. But in this heavy grind, I managed to remember we do need thousands of souls still to summon in all the bosses. So day 91 was used to kill soul dinos, nuke mosh pits, get a dupe unique winged and saddle. Nice. And continue on with the soul slaughter. But I was recommended a way better way to get souls on day 92 thanks to Nat. I forgot to record the first little bit of the day, but this buff down here is obtained from killing a treasure dino, which lets you see treasure chests from a much farther distance. So I flew around the map this day searching for chests exclusively. So you see here in my first chest, I got god items, some souls, and a paragon soul on top. So I floored it and opened as many chests as I could, gaining me a massive boost in progression, all the way till the moon was high in the sky. 93 started off with an amazing trade with Giz here. I offered him about 17 Paragon Souls or so that I didn't need for 7 Carbon Emmas, 7 Lystro, and some Dilo Paragon Souls. Perfect for our wannabe boss killers. Man, if we pull this off with these dinos, I will be very surprised. To give my squad the best fighting chance possible, I did whip up some imprint potions for each of them to make sure that we are at peak performance. We need every edge we can get. Once that was over with, more treasures were plundered for souls, even saw this big old hoarder chest, which is a big, big loot box, but I ain't no way I can afford to open that, so I'll just leave that for anyone else on the server. 94 had me stressing for progression as I used all of my Paragon Souls in trades, and I forgot that I need like 25 to grind up for Paragon Soul Shards for a big, big thing I want to do involving Buddy, but it is a surprise. So I grinded like a lunatic to get any that I could get my filthy hands on. Out of all of the unique saddles I could come across, I got this one for Suelacanth. Like, what do you want me to do with this? But the lovely economy on the server came to save the day as Art showed up at my front door who had the simplest solution to my dilemma. See, I'm not very smart, and I didn't know that different Paragon Souls gave varying amounts of shards, so he gave me one Alpha Paragon Tuso Soul in exchange for all that I had gotten. 
So he got more variety than me, but this single Paragon Soul he gave me once grinded gave me 33 Paragon Shards, and considering I only need like 25 for my secret plan, my problems are solved. It's time to begin our long-awaited and feared boss fights. Day 95 and my friend 7th here arrived at my cave, for he will be in charge of a very important task. See, I will be using Omega Bud to fight the bosses, so 7th job is to control Torag, our tank, so that its abilities actually, you know, run smoothly and are used throughout the fight. I paid him handsomely in Paragon Souls for him to also take his potion compi along, since that is closely related to his tanky duties. We flew out to this clearing near HQ and placed the Omega Beacon. Next to which I potted out Aram, Star-Lord, and Carol to help out the DPS part of things as our first target is the Absorbent Boss. Oh, it's a dragon! I turned him into stone, summoning a Meteor. Ooh, that did a lot! Oh, Meteor time! There it is! Well then, that went rather smoothly. Uh, that there allows us to make God Eggs and to uh, later summon the Absorbent God. Back home, I quickly prepared the big surprise that I have been working on. I made a unique Lystro God token. Listen, there can only be one Lystro God, and it's gonna be buddy. For this, I made a God Egg and went on back to the fighting stage. For your info, the Lystro God can only be damaged by other Lystros. So this massive egg was plopped on down, and into it I shoved the unique Lystro God token and brought in this false idol. Uh, the, oh my gosh. Right, meteor time. Oh, he has 60 million health. Oh, did he kill the copy? Yeah, just as the bubble went down. No. I'm going to meteor him. Oh, that was nice. Oh, baby. Oh, he stoned you. It's fine, I'm still doing good. How much health do you at? Uh, 198 million. Oh, you're <laughs> f***ing fine! <laughs> There's nothing for me to worry about. Oh, I think we got him in the bag, boy. There it is! Now, defeating it allows us to bring the highest honor to Bud by making it godlike, doubling its stats. Oh, he just doubled in HP, and I think doubled in melee. The day after, it was time to fight the Absorbent God. For if we slay it, we can turn Torag godlike as well. But I messed up. We unnecessarily fought the Absorbent boss again, thinking it was the god. And so we beat it very quickly, and there's when we realized our mistake. So I made another god egg, and now it is time to fight the god. Whoa! It's a snail with almost a billion health. This might take a while. Okay, so hold on just a minute. It has a billion health, is absorbent for tanking, is a Akatina and goes into its shell. And that is just a sick joke right there. We took an eternity to whittle down its health. It wasn't really hard since it wouldn't fight back, so we did what we could to slowly whittle down its massive health bar together until finally around midnight, the final blow landed a sweet victory. With this absorbent god soul right here, Torag converted to his final form, a glowing turtle with a health pool so vast, it would take an extinction level event to take him out. Day 97 and it's time to prepare for what I call the ethereal gauntlet. With this little dimensional omega taken out of the picture, I now had paragon souls for all six ethereal bosses. That is right, we will be attempting to reach and beat the ethereal group god. This, till now, everything was prep work. First up is the astral boss, who was absolutely clapped into oblivion thanks to our new power level, and straight after that, the dimensional boss. Fight him, my pretties! Meteor! Whoa! <laughs> it just started! <laughs> Bro, it just started! Holy sh! Torag has 701 million health? Yo. <laughs> yeah, that means that Buddy got that many levels too. And it's all going into melee, baby. Next up, the spectral boss who perished before he even knew what hit him. It was Buddy. Buddy hit him, like a freight train. And let's keep up the pressure with the spiritual boss, who we wiped the floor with, and follow that up with the teleporter boss. Oh. Oh. Oh, he teleported behind you. The thing is, I turned him into stone and everything, and he teleported as a rock. Warp boss here was smited with our grand meteor in the blink of an eye. And with that, the six bosses were out of the way, granting us the souls to fight these variants as gods. 
the group god is also going to need the Omega Altar made from which it is summoned. So I still need a resource session and a ton of more god essence. And time is running out. Day 98 had us fighting the fairy boss for some more boss essence for more god eggs and beat its booty cheeks straight into the afterlife. As you can tell, the bosses we can handle fairly easily. The later things are a different story. Now for the gauntlet, starting with the Astral God. Ah, uh, it dodged my meteors! Alright, I'm about to nuke his booty cheeks once he goes out of that phase. And stone, and meteor, oh look at that, boom baby! Up next, the second contender, the Warp Whoa. God. Oh, he also has uh, 50 million. Oh sh the bubble, the bubble, the bubble! Get me back in the bubble! <laughs> Meteor! Boom! That was a tad tougher. Almost lost some dinos there, so Dara came in clutch with the heels. So after a little bit of a little picnic break, let's face off against the dimensional god that looked like tentacles from the ground. And you know, something that cursed, we can't have that here, so we erased it from existence. Some more god eggs were made and continued with the spiritual god. It's a semi-invisible bird. Oh, where'd he go? Oh! And Star-Lord made a singularity. <laughs> Look at him go! Go, Star-Lord, go! There it is. As for the uh, teleporter god, well, he had some tricks up his sleeve. Oh, there he goes. Oh, where'd he go? Wait, where's everybody going? Come back here, you stinking parasaur. Where did he go? He keeps going away. He's going through the bushes. Where'd he go? Into the woods, it zipped in and eventually vanished straight out of reality. We can only assume it teleported into a mesh and deleted itself. So 99, the big boy boss is drawing closer, but we still need to beat the teleporter god first. So the teleporter boss is clapped first thing in the morning and started to summon in the teleporter god again. Oh, he's going. He's making a break for it again. Oh, he's running into the forest again. Oh, our dinos are still following him. They stopped running. No, not again. But it did its same old trick. Again! Like, bro, I just need your soul. Come back here. I had it. I am not fooling around anymore. So I placed down this ginormous Cytherian boss arena to keep this man caged. So beat down the teleporter boss once more. And then summon in the teleporter god a third time. But with less dinos out this time. All right, go for it. There you go. Now hold still, you booger. Stone, meteor... 7 million? Yeah, Singularity, there you go. There you go, I turned him into stone as well. There we go, finally. And stay down, you little zip zap Fuck. Finally, we can move on to the Spectral God, but nothing, and I mean nothing, had prepared us for the bloodbath we were about to witness. He's dodging a lot of our attacks, to be honest. No, oh, Aram died! Your shield! Your shield! No! Gothlin's dead! Dude, the shield! Varax dead! D oh. Well, that was a uh, close call, and we lost some very important key players. Aram, Varax, and Gothlin will be missed dearly. That is a DPS loss right there for the final fight. But we had all ethereal god souls that we needed, but what came to mind was to summon in the fairy god first, since Maybe if we kill it, we can turn Darok into godlike mode before the finale, but it heals so much. We do not have the power anymore to combat its region, not to mention it eventually flew itself into the sky and got stuck in the flippin' roof. That boss is a no-go, which is okay, since I still need to do that resource run for the altar. So I flung on the prospector gear set and got to work getting all of the stone, the black pearls, and also the cementing paste made. Day 100, the climax to this epic journey. It is time to prove ourselves, and with this Omega Altar in hand and placed into the arena, I took a glance at the beasts that remained and remembered the ones that we had lost, and took a leap of faith into a fight so fierce, it will go down in legend. Whoa, it's a jellyfish, an invisible- Whoa, 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 whoa. I can barely see him. He's over here, he's over here. Oh, he's moving around so much. Holy shit! Oh my oh, god! Dude, he, uh, use the healing potion! Use the healing potion! <laughs> Whoa! Oh. Jacinto and Star Lord are dead! No! Oh, uh, they were outside the bubble, I think. It's not taking any damage, is it? Carol is going for it! Go for it, my buddy, go! 
Also, it's immune to my Gorgon stare. You got him healed up again. That's good. That's good. Oh, I, I, yeah, I got him stunned. I got him stunned. Push him, push him, push him, push him. Okay, so he is stunnable. I just need to really line it up. How much health is it have? Uh, 444 million out of 500. Jesus Christ. Oh, whoa, whoa. That's 10 million damage per ticket was doing to you. Holy schmoly. Oh, I got him. I got him. Oh, I'm almost dead. Oh, I'm almost dead. Oh, that was close. Okay, he's at eight, 387. We're slowly whittling him down. There, that was some good damage on him. Carol actually deals good damage when he reaches him. I got him. Metering. Come a bit closer to me. Okay, we almost got him halfway. Ooh, a million point five damage I did there. Ah, oh, he misses the meteor damage as well. We got him under half. Ooh, 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 ah. Go, Carol, go. You got it, my little ant buddy. Oh, I stunned him. Okay, good. Come a little bit closer to me, because I need to stand outside the bowl to hit him. Yep. Oh, I just teleported. No, 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 it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. That was really juicy hits right there. Ooh, juicy hits, juicy hits, juicy hits, juicy hits. Oh, that was good. Oh, he's got into a crazy mode. Is that 40 million out of 500? Oh, oh, 7 million, 7 million, 8 million. The ethereal god has been slain. It is done. The group god is no more. The team took a heavy beating, but we made it through. Thank you so very much for watching, my lovelies. I truly appreciate it, and I really hope you enjoyed yourselves, and I'll be seeing you in the next big adventure. Take care now. Bye-bye.